Welcome to the Otaku Tainment Bar. I'm your Otaku Bartender DAC Source with this special alcohol and anime. For this episode of Bartender Glass of the God, episode 4, A Bar Secret Ingredient and The Face of a Martini, there are once again two parts with multiple drinks, but I will be focusing on the classic martini. The martini comes in the second half, so I'll give you the first half of the episode. The episode starts with the chairman and Kamishima wanting to hire a French chef named Monsieur Yamanoche as the chef of the hotel. Kamishima ends up going to Sasakura at Eden Hall for the first time, I realized, to get a Moscow mule and mainly to ask for help. The plan ends up being Kamishima, Kurushima, Higuchi are going to take out Yamanoche for just a night out of town pretty much and then meet back up with Sasakura at Eden Hall. There, Sasakura and Yamanoche make a deal, a wager of sorts, just to try alcohol and then Yamanoche will decide what it is. If Yamanoche gets it right, will be the next chef, if not, leave him alone. Sakura, in a way, kind of tricks Yamanoche by giving mirroring while Yamanoche is kind of picking up sherry vibes from it. And it's also Sasakura kind of slightly saying, you know, wine, uh, some years kind of uh, are not as great as they are cracked up to be, but also doing that a lot more politely. Apparently, Yomanoche's biggest concern was just ingredient quality, of course, and the origin of ingredients mattering a lot, comparing French food to Japanese food and you know, and drinks and how the ingredients matter to get that very specific taste. Either way, Sasakura is able to convince Yamanoche, but does say it was actually Kamishima's idea to use the mirror, which I guess gets a little bit of respect, but also don't think Yamanoche completely buys it. Moving on to the second part where we will see the martini come into play, Kurushima is at Eden's Hall just chatting with Sasakura when Kawakami, the bartender from the previous episode, comes in and wants a martini with a face. Of course, Sasakura makes one, Kawakami likes it, and it turns out, just like the previous episode, ice matters. Drinks getting watered down matters because when gin gets watered down, some of the fragrance is lost, and that's kind of what was happening with Kawakami. And then, like typical Sasakura at this point, antagonizes Kawakami a little bit, which of course motivates. From here, Sasakura, Kurushima, and Kawakami end up going to a bar called Hell's Arm. It's apparently a music bar Sasakura would get taken to when still an apprentice. There we meet a cool looking bartender named Ginjo Yuri. When Kawakami orders a martini here, Ginjo gives a shaken vodka martini. Of course, Kawakami likes this one too and the uniqueness of it for a martini, but orders a gin martini to trying to finalize what makes one so great. And now this is where I'm going to make Ginjo's version of a classic gin martini. Now the martini Ginjo makes comes in a more cube kind of wine glass looking glass and uses a chilled gin and about 60 milliliters of it, which comes out about to two ounces if you're using a jigger. Oh, and of course, we got, can't forget the ice. Ice is always important. There we go. Go ahead, two ounces of roughly. Yeah, this is mainly for me. Um, this is pretty much the cheapest gin I could find. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm hoping it's good. It's still chilled though, so that will affect the flavor either way. It probably doesn't matter how expensive it is at that point. It, uh, it does a little bit, but not in this case, I don't think. And then I actually am using the exact uh, vermouth extra dry that it shows in the episode. And this was actually still the cheapest uh, vermouth I could find. So I think maybe the whole point of this bar being more of a dive bar is to be on the cheaper side while still being good. And it, it literally says just use two dashes. Don't know what that means, but... I, that can be a dash. That, I feel like dashes probably make a little bit of difference. Now another big thing about this is you're going to stir it a little extra than you would other drinks. And it's supposed to help heat it up a little bit, which 
I do not understand since you chill the gin. I guess it's supposed to help mix up the flavors with everything, but just, you know, stir it a little longer, raise the temperature, but still with the ice. Yeah. And there we have Ginjo's classic unique-ish gin martini. I've actually never had a martini of all the drinks I've had. Weirdly so, this will be my first try. Huh. I have no idea what martini is supposed to taste like. I don't know if this is it. I don't know what to expect because it doesn't really taste like the gin or the vermouth. And I thought it would at least taste more like the gin. Maybe because it's cold. Maybe because it's been chilled like this. Wow, that is... It's just completely different than what any of my expectations would have thought. Wow, but it's actually pretty good. I don't know if I even need to stir the ice. But it's also very cheap. So if you're a uh, martini person, this isn't a classic martini glass either. It wasn't supposed to be. But they're apparently very cheap to make. Just doing this and very easy. If anything so also this one didn't include any garnish sometimes they normally do you would see an olive or a vodka one included lemon peel but I don't know a, a unique and probably makes a huge difference of a martini style mm. Mm. yeah so that is it for this episode of bartender glass of God Thank you so much for visiting the Otaku Tainment Bar. I have been your Otaku Bartender, DAC Stories. Until next time, bye.